Well, it's that time again. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our uh, next expert, whose name is uh, Patty Morrison. Uh, Patty is uh, part of a panel of 11 experts who are each talking to you in the course of this uh, two-day webinar on some aspect that uh, is ancillary to your speaking skill development. Uh, and each of the aspects has a significant effect uh, in and of themselves <clears throat> when it comes to helping you achieve reach and influence. But together, uh, and they, they capture tremendous synergy and one complements the other and and really really does give you uh, uh, reach and high impact uh, on the message that's important to you now over to Patty by way of introduction Patty is an international speaker uh, she is a coach a trainer and a founder of image strategist.com she has been transforming the way people look for over 25 years. Patty has two married sons and five beautiful grandbabies, all under the age of five. Now that's what I call planning. She likes traveling, cooking, swimming, running, and she has recently taken up golf. Patty is passionate about people looking their very best. She loves creating fashionable wardrobes that, matches, that match a person's personality lifestyle, and budget. Patty has dressed over 3,000 men and women. Her latest book is called First Impressions, Dressing for Impact, and it is now a bestseller on Amazon. My fellow attendees, let's give a warm digital welcome to Patty Morris. Over to you, Patty. Could we start with uh, you telling us how we would like to handle your questions, questions that you receive? Yes, at the end. You'd like to store them up and keep them at the end. So attendees, would you please post your questions in the Q&A box, but not the chat box. The chat <laughs> box is for chat, the Q&A is for questions. That way we only have one place to look for your questions. Thank you. Okay. Patty, uh, next question for you. Uh, uh, Tell us all, why, do, why, why is image important? Why is how we look important when it comes to complementing our desire to have reach and influence? Yes, well, you can have awesome content and, and, uh, you, know, um, and you can be an awesome speaker, but how you look is equally important because whether you're speaking for business or for pleasure, how we look has a powerful impact impact on us and others. So, you know, it, it affects how we feel. And if you had one of those days, you know, when um, you get up, you know how you have an important event to speak at, you get up a little bit earlier, you spend a little extra time on your hair and your grooming, and then you go to your closet and you pull out your favorite outfit. And that day you just feel fabulous. You feel confident, when you run into people, you can totally be there for the people that you're with. And when you're speaking at an event, you, you have no attention on yourself. And then there's those days when it's not, you know, you can't really think of really important things that are going to be happening. Maybe you're even just going to a networking event. So you spend a little less time on your hair and your grooming. And then you go to your closet and you pull out something that maybe you haven't worn for a while or maybe it used to be a favorite, but now it's not quite fitting as well as it used to. But no matter what, it's not one of your favorite outfits. And that day, you know, you find yourself like conscious of what you're wearing, adjusting your clothes, you run into people. That could be an important client or, or uh, somebody you haven't seen in a long time. But the whole day you're saying, why did I wear this outfit? And I think, you know, from just talking to audiences, that seems to be a common thing that people have experienced. And the other thing, too, is that how you look has a powerful uh, impact on other people. So, you know, yeah, in the first studies say that, like, in the first five seconds, people decide if they like us, if they trust us and if they can relate to us. So before we even open our mouth, people are deciding whether they're even interested in what we have to say. Why is, uh, it, that, um, why is it that we in British Columbia uh, seem to have gone the casual route? Uh, yes. Whereas the rest of the world uh, uh, dresses for the occasion. Yes. Well, you know, I say in Vancouver, it takes very little to be above average. 
because I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later in the, the talk here, just explaining what the different categories of clothes are so that you can always be appropriately dressed. Mm, okay. And you know, within the business world with business, you know, casual Fridays and that coming in, that's really a bit of a slippery slope, you know, because people, companies call me in to, to upgrade the image of their employees because they find people are almost wearing pajamas to work and then the people kind of go with the lowest common denominator. So they seem to be the ones that are drawing people rather than other people inspiring them. Yeah. And, and to my amazement, we don't, we don't, we in Vancouver don't think that there's anything wrong with that. No. <laughs> now I, I, I have introduced you, but uh, in your own words, uh, tell us what your credentials are to be, uh, to being a, an expert in the whole field of image consulting. Yes. Okay, well, um, can I tell you a bit about my story? Your story will probably capture the essence of why you're an expert. Exactly. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen here. So I can just show you my PowerPoint. Is it happening? Yep. It's it just is. taking its time. It's Sunday. It's moving at Sunday morning <laughs> pace. <laughs> like here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Beautiful. I love the color. Yeah, good. Hey, can I just show you a couple of other things? I just want to show you a couple of before and afters because something I was going to say about how a lot of people come to me because it's very hard to be objective about yourself. And so um, a lot of people come to me for that because you can ask like, you know, your mom or your husband or your best friend and they all adore you. But sometimes it's as hard for them to be objective about you as it is for, for uh, yourself. And this is Neely. She's a medical doctor who I met at a, at a conference. And she was very excited about launching a, a new holistic uh, business where she was going to get into the roots of disease instead of being like a, you know, a, like a medical doctor. And so uh, she was feeling a bit dated and she was going to be doing a lot of speaking and networking. And, you know, she felt like she kind of was out of date with fashion and she didn't know um, kind of even what stores to shop in. So we just did a makeover on her and uh, just you know, got her a haircut, taught her how to do light, tasteful makeup in five minutes and uh, kind of went through the whole spectrum. What we were just talking about, about uh, people's wardrobes. So, you know, it used to be that we were just talking to people about speaking. And, um, you know, speakers that were a lot more visible these days because of all the social media and websites and Facebook Live and people just catching you uh, when you haven't planned to, you know, go to a specific event. So we're, this is just a very casual outfit. And this is another woman, uh, Fiona. She uh, came to me because I met her at an event I was speaking at and she had just been given the Dress for Success um, Inspiration Award and they wanted her to be their spokesperson. So she was out and about um, and when she was going to be presented at, for this award, she said, I, I need you to come to my place and look and see what I can wear. So uh, I kind of looked at what she had and then uh, we ended up getting her another outfit here. But I took her to my hairstylist and we, and we did the, the five minute makeup routine and put her in um, clothes that are suitable for speaking because, you know, all solid colors and not at such a distraction. And uh, Fiona said, after having just had my hair cut and styled and a makeup application that was simple and easy to duplicate and outfit chosen that were simple yet fashionable, I felt like a million bucks. So I just kind of wanted to show you that this is, you know, if, if people asked me, I think it was like 10 years ago, what would be like your favorite job in the whole world? I just said, I just want to do makeovers on people all day. So this is like what I get to do. But anyways, this is my story. So, uh, you know, growing up, I, um, I always loved fashion and clothes and I liked having new clothes all the time. And we didn't have a lot of money in our family growing up, but fortunate for me, my mom was a sewer. So um, at the age of seven, she started teaching me how to sew on my grandma's treadle sewing machine. So here's me when I was 10, I'm on the right here in one of my fashionable, uh, relatively complicated corduroy outfits with my two brothers and my sister. And uh, this is me when I was 13, I entered the um, Eaton's teen sewing contest. So that's me on the right there with the, with the knee highs there. And I just kind of squeaked in. 
And then when I was, um, when I, the other thing I liked doing in school was like organizing things. So I always had systems for things. So after high school, the counselors there said, you would be really good at computer programming and systems analysis. So I thought, great, I'm going to go do that. And so I did that for, or I went there and got my education at BCIT. And then I got my first corporate job. So I had to come up, it was quite stressful trying to come up with five different professional looking outfits for every day of the week when all I had to work with was a student wardrobe. Of course, being a little tight for money with my student loans and whatever. So I, um, you know, I, I would decide that, you know, try everything on, have this huge pile of clothes on the bed. And before I figured out what I was going to wear. And so a lot of people tell me they've done that when I first met them. And then uh, I, d I decide that I need to go shopping on my, on my uh, lunch hours. So then, you know, be, I would go straight to the sale rack. And if I found something and I thought it looked good and it fit, the price was right, I thought I found this bargain. So then I take it home and uh, I'd, I'd, um, I'd realize that I didn't have anything in my wardrobe to go with it. So then I'd go out shopping again and I'd get, I'd buy more bargains and I had less things to go with it again. So then I thought, you know, being a computer programmer, systems analyst, I should be able to put together a system for my wardrobe. So I would read fashion magazines. I'd look at what other people were wearing. I'd study the mannequins in the store windows and I'd figure out that there's quite a lot of details that goes into putting together a wardrobe. So pretty soon I got quite good at that. And I, my, my sister particularly, and my, some of my colleagues wanted help with that. And so I had helped them and I was having a lot of fun doing that on the side. And I thought, wow, there's a real market for this because, uh, you know, the, a lot of women have the same kind of problems, especially if they don't like shopping and, and uh, they just need to look good. So uh, one day I opened a women's clothing store. And so my goal when I opened the store was to be able to dress every woman to look amazing. So I'd read a lot of books on style and because I was always surprised when somebody would walk in a store, the store, and then would, what would look good on a couple of other people didn't look good on that person. So I, it was kind of figuring out um, what looked best. And so uh, one day I heard about this number one image strategist in North America and uh, his name was Robert Ponte. So I wanted to be certified as an image strategist. And when this man walked onto the stage, I was just blown away. Being the number one image strategist, you would expect his um, appearance to be impeccable. He had like every a gray hair in place and he had like this beautiful charcoal suit and burgundy belt and burgundy shoes. And that wasn't the thing that impressed me the most about him. It was how he viewed people and he, viewed people, he told me to picture every person as if they were on the front cover of a magazine, not necessarily a fashion magazine, it could be Time magazine or People magazine, but looking their absolute best. So I started doing makeovers for his uh, workshops that he was doing. And then working with him completely changed the way that I ran my business. So um, in my store, I would, when a woman would come in and want to buy a blouse, then I tell her to go home and bring back the rest of the pieces from her wardrobe and then we put together to make sure everything kind of went together and so uh, I did that and then after 13 years it was time to close the store so then I could start my own consulting business and so um, uh, after that then I um, oh whoops okay after that then just recently I wrote my um, best-selling book, First Impressions, Dressing for Impact. And in this book, I put the tools and strategies and systems that um, every person needs to know to actually build a wardrobe that matches their personality, their lifestyle, and their budget. And, um, you know, I realized when I was meeting with clients that I couldn't tell them everything, like the whole philosophy and how to shop and all those things. So I put everything in one book. And so that's the book here. And then I also put together a certified image strategist training program. I train people to be successful uh, image consultants and I give them all the tools that I've put together to take people through a seven step makeover system. Well, that certainly um, establishes your credentials as an expert. So now could you um, take about uh, 30 minutes and give us some basic training? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to share with you is the three keys to making a great first impression. 
So the first is determining your personal style. The second is ensuring that you're appropriately dressed for speaking and how to pull your whole look together because it's all about the polish. So the first one is determining your personal style. And uh, the reason it's important that people know what their personal style is, is because when you actually get clothes that match your style, you feel comfortable in them, they suit you, um, you know, the, you're wearing the prints that you like. Um, there's certain things that people like. And so your personal style is based on your body and uh, facial features, as well as your personality. So sometimes people have a main look and a secondary look. So we're gonna go through the four uh, personal styles for women and the four personal styles for men. So this is kind of a quick overview. The four for women are chic, elegant, glamorous, and spicy. So the first look is the chic women. So this is Barbara Streisand, uh, Nicole Kidman, Meryl Streep, and Sarah Jessica Parker. So just a moment here. Okay, so um, the, the chic woman likes some details to be a little different, kind of a twist on the classics. Uh, she prefers more of an eclectic look. She likes her look to be interesting and intriguing, and her accessories are often uh, smaller and understated. And she doesn't want her clothes to be the center of attention. And the colors she wears and the prints are quite subdued. This is actually the most sophisticated and complicated of the four different looks. Also, when I'm going through these, see if you can find out which, where, which uh, characteristics you kind of resonate to. And as I was saying, if you find your couple of different ones, then it might just be that you have a main look and a secondary look because your personality and your body um, shape and features might be a, a different style. So this is like the elegant woman here. So this is like Kate Middleton, Angelina Jolie, uh, Princess Di, and Jackie Onassis. So elegant women, they like clean lines and simplicity. They look best in solids and neutral colors. They're attracted to classic styles. They wear relatively few prints. They prefer their hair to be, to be structured as opposed to like the messier look. And the elegant woman really cares about the details. And a real telltale is that if you're a person who's actually happy to wear the same outfits over and over, as opposed to a glamorous woman who just, she'd be horrified if you said she, we had to simplify and make her wardrobe smaller because she actually enjoys having lots of different kind of outfits. And she'll often take one accessory out as she goes out the door. She likes her look to be a bit simpler. And this is the glamorous woman. So the glamorous woman, this is Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Lopez, um, Sandra Bullock and Julia Roberts. So uh, glamorous women are often the most adventurous in fashion and they like wearing bright colors and they love glitter and shine. They have a fun and approachable personality. They love reading fashion magazines. Uh, this, woman, this woman likes shopping on her own and she needs more clothes than the average person. So I always say to glamorous women, a lot of times they're apologizing for how many clothes they have and how much they don't really want to get rid of things because they have, they're always putting new looks together. But I tell them, no, you're a glamorous woman. You're supposed to have more outfits than the average person because you're like the inspiration for fashion. And a lot of women we see in the, in the checkout counters are, are glamorous women. Okay, and then we have the spicy women. Okay, I'd say these are like my fun friends. I'm sure you all have them. You might be one yourself. So this is like Bette Midler, Rihanna, um, Tina Turner, and Christine Aguilera are examples of spicy women. So these women, they love to laugh. They have a great sense of humor. And they're a bit on the outrageous side. They can wear bold colors and prints, uh, including animal prints. And they like unusual hairstyles. They don't really care what other people think, and they don't actually sometimes even care about what other people think about fashion. They kind of make their own style as they go along. And this woman loves to be the star of the show, and she may have been a tomboy when she was younger. So that's a very quick overview of the four looks. I have them in more detail in my book, and of course, when I work with people, uh, I go into that and make sure that they understand their style so that when they're shopping, it actually helps you avoid making clothing mistakes because it takes out all the things that you shouldn't be looking at. So I'm sure you've all had that experience with a sales person, very well-meaning or a friend, and you go shopping with the, your friend or whatever, and you end up having things in your closet that would probably look better on them, but you don't really feel comfortable. And the more confident you are about your look, the more you can direct people 
to actually help you. So let's look at the four looks for men here. So the four looks for men are distinguished and classy, the sharp and athletic look, the urban sophisticate, and the wild and fun look. So we'll start with the distinguished and classy look. So this is, uh, okay, the, the distinguished and classy man here. So he, he likes, oh, George Clooney, of course, but um, he likes clean lines and simplicity. Oh, he exudes a feeling of wealth and importance. He prefers and looks good um, best in solids and neutral colors. He likes classic styles and he likes his hair to be more structured as opposed to the messier look also. Okay, this is the sharp and athletic man. So this is Matt Damien. And this man has a fun and approachable personality. He exudes confidence and gets attention. He looks best in solids and neutrals. He has an athletic build and prefers to wear comfortable, casual clothing because his, his body moves and it's very fluid. And he's comfortable wearing bright colors. And a lot of the top models and movie stars um, for men fall into this category. Okay, then we have the urban sophisticate. Okay, and uh, this is Adam Levine. So his look is intriguing and interesting. He can be adventurous and daring in fashion. He incorporates the latest trends most easily. And he's actually comfortable with um, trendy hairstyles. And he wears eclectic combinations. He loves shopping on his own. Uh, a lot of the men I work with, they, they, they like shopping the least. Even though a lot of my clients hate, my women clients hate shopping, men hate it even more. And this is the most sophisticated of the men's looks. So this is the wild and fun look. And uh, this is uh, Will Ferrell here. So this man is unique and unpredictable. He has a great sense of humor. He enjoys being the center of attention. He's comfortable in bright colors and he often breaks the fashion rules. He doesn't really care about the fashion rules a lot of times. And so the next thing I'd like to talk about is how to ensure that you're dressed appropriately as a speaker. And this is where, uh, Roger, you and I were just talking about, I was saying through the whole spectrum of your day's activities, you actually want to be uh, dressed well because um, you want to be consistent in how you look. So the best way to do this is to divide it into the six categories of clothes. So what you need is a little capsule of clothes in each one of these categories. And depending on what your lifestyle is like, you have bigger capsules in certain areas. But for sure, every single person needs to have one outfit that's a favorite outfit in every one of these categories here. The two that are highlighted are the business casual and presentation. So pay attention to that for speaker for your actually speaking outfits. So the first one is uh, the sporty activity. So these are specifically designed, these clothes, for sportswear, for um, exercise. And what we see in Vancouver is a lot of um, people are wearing these clothes like they exercise and then they keep wearing them the whole day. But really, the, the right way is to only wear these clothes for exercising. Then we have weekend wear. And so these for, are for like um, casual on the weekend or uh, when you, you know, people who are working in nine to five, if they come home in the evening, they change into this or just their casual kind of weekend wear. So um, it's, they're less structured. They're made of washable fabric so that you can, I always say, you know, you can cook in these kind of clothes and not worry about getting them dirty. You can move in them. You can sit on the couch and watch TV. And uh, that, that's definitely weekend wear. So if you have a little capsule, you can still look great even when you're at home. A lot of times people tell me, you know, it doesn't really matter. I just need the clothes for when I'm going to work or going out. But I say like the people you love, your family, your friends, these are the people that you're going to be spending a lot of time with. So it's good if you had a little capsule of clothes that you liked here because weekend wear is less expensive than uh, your more structured uh, clothes for other categories. So this is dressy casual. So, um, you know, we had sports, we had um, the casually smart and then the dressy casual, the weekend wear and then dressy casual. These are the three casual categories. So this is like a little dressier if you're going out for, to meet a nice rest, you know, meet your friend at a nice restaurant. Um, or going to a friend's house for dinner, the nicer dinner. And so these clothes are a little more structured. They're still, um, sometimes they can be dry cleanable. And often a third piece is the key to making people's wardrobes work. A third piece is like the, the piece that you put over top, like a jacket, a cardigan, a vest that kind of completes your outfit. This is what I find is lacking in a lot of people's wardrobes because it's the most expensive piece in your wardrobe. But, you know, I, I say have few clothes, buy really good quality 
buy clothes that are durable so you can wear them for years and that you can mix the coordinates up. So this, you can see you probably wouldn't sit on the couch wearing these kind of clothes. So that's a good, um, this is a very good way to decide if it's weekend wear or if it's more uh, dressy casual kind of clothes. So those are the three cat casual categories. And now the next three are the little more dressier ones. So we're going to look next at business casual because, you know, it used to be in, in uh, Vancouver or really any place in Canada, really, uh, the, um, the presentation used to be the look that we had for uh, going to, for business, for work, for presentations. Now, business casual is very acceptable. And sometimes presentation can be even a little overdressed. So it really depends who you're going to be with, depending on what uh, kind of category you're going to wear there. So let's look at business casual. So you can see these two women's um, jackets here. These are very important because for business casual, a lot of times it's the jackets that you're going to be changing that are going to um, be the difference between whether you look professional or whether you look like you don't really have the proper wardrobe, even though you're an awesome speaker and you have great content. If you don't look the part, then people find it you don't look um, don't look as believable. So, and it's much simpler to dress for men. I have to say, you know, they, they have less styles to choose from. They have less shirt co collars. They have less colors. They don't have all the prints, the necklines, the fabrics that women have. So I just thought it might be good to put this all in a little uh, picture here. So this could be like a business casual uh, for more for men. Okay. And then here is the presentation. Now, see the presentation, it's a dry cleanable fabrics. It's usually a matched suit. Um, so a jacket and skirt for women, jacket and pant for women. And then men, it's always like some kind of a, it's definitely a suit too. And then I wanted to show you, oh, the elegant evening is the other uh, category too for, for um, uh, women. I always say, you know, you, the, the biggest thing you can do is make a mistake rushing out to the store to buy something for an event you have to go to. And some women even tell me that they can't, they just don't go to events because they don't have the right thing to wear. So you always want to have like one dressy dress maybe or an outfit that you can wear to go to if you're going to go to like a black tie event or a wedding. And then if you just have a number of different tops, then you can go to a house party or whatever. You won't look like you're wearing your work, your work wear or your weekend wear to go to the party. You'll look like you actually uh, respected the host and took the time to get ready. And then I want to show you this for men for the evening wear. So uh, business casual for men. See, it's always this kind of a sports jacket. And then for men for presentation, it's, it's a matching suit. But men can also wear this matching suit or tux for elegant evening. It's worth, see, it's kind of easier for them. So then the third point of how to look great for being a speaker is to pull your whole look together. So here we, we look at the things like the hair, the makeup, facial hair, grooming, things uh, for men, and accessories. So I just wanted to show you that very few people wake up and look fabulous when they get up and just walk out the door. And I, most people who come to me, they say to me, you know, I just want wash and wear. I just don't want to spend any time. But I always say to people, you have to put a little bit of time in to look good. Because look, even Jennifer Lopez, you know, if you passed her on the street, she'd be invisible. You wouldn't even notice her. And I realize these people all have entourages of people helping them. But it just you know, just doing a little tiny bit with your hair and makeup. And I always say, you don't have to know how to groom every person on the planet. You just have to know how to do your own hair. So if you don't know how to do your own hair, no matter what age you are, you can learn. And I have people that help teach you how to actually use the right products. And, you know, it starts with a great cut. And so then you can look like her. <laughs> okay. And so I want to show you a few people here. So this is a woman I met uh, from Seattle who uh, came up and I attended one of her events she was speaking at. And she, uh, she works with um, high income people and she helps them with investments. So she was going to go to 50 states in 50 weeks. And she was saying, I've got one outfit I'm going to wear. I'm taking a backpack and this is how I'm going to look. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. So I was kind of brave and went up to her and said, you know, I think you could look, you need to look like what you're selling and you're obviously an expert. And so she came up here for the day. And so we did a makeover on her. And now she looks affluent and creative. And, you know, if you were sitting there listening to a speaker, who would you rather listen to? Who do you think looks more interesting? You know, it's like you could look at, you know, a vase of dandelions or you could look at a vase of beautiful, huge bouquet of flowers. What is more inspiring to you? So I find a lot of people say to me, look, I just don't have 
um, you know, my hair is really thin or whatever, and I can't do anything with it. And so, you know, I'm just showing here how, you know, all, you know, the hairstylist actually cut her hair and it looks, still looks longer and fuller. So a lot of it's product. And I have a ton of women who have thin hair who look fabulous. They look like they have lots of hair. And see, then we changed her glasses too. And see, that makes a big difference too. She looks so much more youthful. And then we changed her clothes. And really, I still gave her a little capsule of six items that she could take traveling. And she has lots of different looks. And see, jewelry and everything is just so much more richer looking. She looks like she has money. So you actually listen to her. If you had money, you'd think she'll know what to do with it. And now makeup. This is another critical point here because um, a lot of times women come and they, they, um, they either haven't done it or they're really bored with their makeup routine. And I say you need to get a makeup routine once a year and just learn a couple of new colors, a couple of new techniques, because it's kind of boring doing that. You know, I find maintenance is very boring. You know, nobody wakes up in the morning and goes, yes, I get to have a shower, do my hair, my makeup. You know, nobody does this. I mean, maybe some people do, but nobody I know. And so this is a woman, um, this is Claire, and she is uh, an author and speaker. And she's just put, she's just launching her latest book called The Cheever Fever. And so I just did a makeover on her. And so, you know, I find this a lot with women where they have like long hair, but they pull it back. So it doesn't actually frame their face. So we just did a makeover on her and see just, just having a, a nice cut and then having light, tasteful makeup and changing her accessories to make them very simple. And, you know, I always say that with scarves, you know, I, I look through people's wardrobes, they have tons of scarves, usually like one or maybe two or none work. And then, but you need like a couple of scarves that look fabulous. And a lot of times it's just, you have the wrong scarf. It's not that you don't know how to tie it. Okay. So this is like her light, simple and you buy metal before you buy color with accessories. It's just, uh, then they can kind of go with everything. There's like 10 basic accessories that everybody needs that will accessorize every outfit. Cause I find a lot of times people just don't, they've got lots of accessories in their accessory boxes, but they don't have the few they need to make every outfit work. So for accessories for speakers, keep your jewelry very, very simple. Avoid jewelry that makes moves or makes noise because it can actually, um, the microphone can pick it up. Wear a simple watch and bracelet and buy metal, wear metal, don't wear, don't wear colored accessories and wear run one ring per hand. I always tell women, pretty up your hands, just, you know, like just, it just looks great. And you don't wanna be wearing scarves and things like that. Of course, these are the basic rules. You can always break the rules once you know the rules, but these are just kind of uh, general guidelines. Patty, um, can you give us an example of jewelry that moves? Yes, like dangly earrings or necklaces that jiggle or earrings that jiggle. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I wish I could show you some here. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I wear this is the most important accessory. I always say to people, it's, it's not like you have to wear glasses, it's you get to wear glasses, especially in this day and age. Because, you know, I find for men too, you know, it's men don't have as many choices to, of things they can do. Like sometimes they can't, you know, hair, they don't, as they get older, they don't, they can't uh, change their hairstyles and colors and, and uh, their makeup. Of course, they don't need to, of course, but um, with, with glasses, it can be very impactful. And I have a lot of uh, men that actually know the power of the glasses. And so, um, you know, if they're in negotiations or whatever, they have glasses, even sometimes they don't even need them, but they, they have glasses just for the impact of them. So, you know, they can be awesome. Um, even when you don't do your makeup perfectly, you know, and you get up in the morning, you put them on, you look fabulous. So here's a woman I, I uh, used to do a full page makeover series every week in the North Shore News. And so this is a woman that came that wanted a, a makeover. And, you know, she, um, she told me that she had these glasses, which a lot of people do. They buy these ones that they think are invisible, but there's no way to dress in a neutral way because even the absence of style says something about you. And a lot of women um, just can't be bothered to do their color their hair anymore. So they want to go uh, gray. And sometimes it works fabulous. Gray hair looks fabulous on even some young women, but sometimes not because it can, it can actually age you 10 years if you, if you go gray at the wrong time. So this is, um, makeover we did on her and she actually was a redhead before too so we did her hair red and glasses and makeup and clothes and see she just looks so much more vibrant and then this is Stella she's a successful architect in the city and uh, 
she came to me because uh, she just felt out of touch with fashion. She was buying quality clothes, but she was feeling kind of matronly and she was going into a new season in her life, personal and uh, business wise and looking for a particular job. And so uh, we did her hair. She also another person who has kind of thin hair. So we made her, her hair look amazing. And we see, we just changed her glasses a bit. So they weren't so generic looking and we gave her a current, current clothes and reproportioned her body because you know a lot of people tell me that they're waiting to lose till they lose weight before they get new clothes but really clothes can reproportion you you can instantly look great and then the weight can be a separate issue i find sometimes when you look fabulous it motivates you to lose weight and if you don't lose the weight it doesn't even matter you still look fabulous so this is uh, stella's new look and you know what i love is people actually maintain these looks so you know, this is like a couple of years later, she still looks fabulous. She just needed to have the skills, know how to get the product for her hair, get the right stylist, get her eyebrows done, you know, just where she has a couple of different pairs of glasses now and really good earrings. Her look is quite chic. So, you know, she had a lot of dangly kind of things, but this is like more of a corporate kind of a look and, you know, jacket that's chic, kind of interesting and notice the, the uh, bracelet, like it's all the little tiny details and the top she has on has a tiny bit of detail too. So it's all these little details that, that uh, give you a really great look. Oh, I want to show you this eyewear too for, uh, I just got Joe, he's wearing these glasses. They're quite, they're quite generic. You see a lot of men wearing this kind of look, you know, you meet him, nice guy, looks wonderful. But then when he actually has glasses, you, you notice his eyes. When you have good glasses, you, you, you actually feel like you can kind of relate to the person. And this is another example. I was going to show you a facial hair, a, an older man having facial hair. It's not really old, but anyways, well-groomed facial hair because, you know, we're noticing a lot of facial hair uh, with men. It's very trendy right now. So a lot of young men, it's great as long as they keep it really well-groomed. But as men get older, um, it's better to have no facial hair or perfectly groomed. Good. But, but uh, you know, the, the studies show that actually the biggest impact is no facial hair. So that's just good to know. So if you determine what your personal style is, then you'll only have clothes that actually suit you and that you really love wearing. And then ensure that you have the appropriate outfits, not just for speaking, but for the for your lifestyle. And, you know, no matter what your budget is, you can have a short term uh, shopping list and a long-term shopping list. That's what I put together for people so that, uh, you know, there's no, it doesn't matter. It's every, everybody can start right away. Either they get it all handled right away or they just add it in pieces over the seasons. And then completing your look. So getting a good haircut, products, grooming, uh, grooming, um, you know, makeup, learning how to do that, light, tasteful makeup, short amount of time, and then accessories, having those basic accessories that make it that you can accessorize any outfit. So if after listening to me, uh, you feel like, oh, there's a couple things that you're missing, I, I say, please invest in what you need. Because if you invest in your wardrobe, it's a small investment for a great gain. You know, the thing about it is people don't see your house, your car, your kids, your family, the people you love. They only see you. So, you know, it's, a, and it's, it's not nearly as expensive as all those other things. So you can invest a small amount and... It can impact every area of your life. Okay. So my, my next question of you is, is, of course, your segue into making us an irresistible offer. Uh, everything you have uh, taught us is absolutely intriguing, uh, okay. particularly those of us from the West Coast who are, uh, who are uh, used to uh, casual. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, now, uh, I know you have programs that uh, will allow us to go in depth. Uh, so <laughs> maybe you maybe it would ex explain those to us. Yes. And, um, make us an offer that we can't refuse. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, well, the first thing I want to say is that I have a 30-minute, a free 30-minute signature style consultation. So that we explore what a makeover would actually look like for you. What, you know, everyone's kind of different. Some people need like everything done and some people just need a bit of polish. And you also get an objective opinion from an expert. And also I can answer any of those questions that you have. Is this, uh, I, is this on by phone? On Zoom? On Zoom. It okay. can be by phone if people are more comfortable with that, but I also do it on Zoom too. Okay. And, and then, then I give you, 
tips and suggestions. Course, you, get, you get to see the skin tone and the yes. parent style of the, of the client. Okay, great. Yes. So the thing about my job, it's very visual. <laughs> okay, and then tips and suggestions for grooming and clothes. Okay, so then I have a professional branding package. So this um, that I'm offering is a special price to the attendees. So this is a personal, it includes a personal style assessment. So we look at every area of your appearance, including hair, makeup, clothes, how you want to look, um, what, the, what issues you have now, and so that we have a complete list of exactly what it is that uh, you need with, help with. Then it includes a makeup consultation and uh, makeup application and hairstyling tips. And then I connect you with my whole network of people. So depending on what you need, you know, I specialize in people's wardrobes, but I have hairstylists, makeup artists, estheticians, uh, photographers, videographers, whatever, to help you with your whole uh, presentation look. And so then we also do a wardrobe edit and review. Uh, we shop for wardrobe and accessories. Uh, we make a list of exactly what you need, a short and long-term list. We make sure your outfits are all coordinated so that they match your personality and lifestyle. And we look at shoes and leg wear, because that's sometimes an issue for people too. And then we have we take photos along the way just for fun. And so you have a lot of you can see yourself in lots of different along the process. And then this also includes a professional photo shoot with Anita Alberto, which is fabulous and we phot photograph lots of outfits and then you have it for your website and your social media and personal ones and whatever so and so much more so that's my my professional branding package and so that's a 1097 instead of 1297 and then i also have an online makeover package um, so this this includes a person this is all done by zoom it's a personal style assessment uh, a makeup consultation so basically i'm telling you how to do this and hairstyling tips and then I kind of walk you through all that and then I uh, make sure that you have the 10 essential wardrobe items that you need to maximize your wardrobe because I find a lot of times people have a lot of clothes but they don't have those main pieces that can give them you know I just used to do a, a, um, a little workshop where I showed people how with 10 pieces in their wardrobe they could get 25 amazing outfits and so I find lots of people have more than 10 pieces in their closet but they don't have the 10 essential pieces. Then you also, in the online, you get my objective opinion on your clothing items and your outfits. And I give you a wardrobe and accessory shopping plan based on your personality, lifestyle, and budget. And then we look at your shoes and leg wear. We do this all on Zoom. And then I answer any specific unique wardrobe needs you have and then help you uh, tell you where to go to get these kind of things and so much more. So the 30 minute signature style consultation the professional branding package, and the online makeover. So if you go to imagestrategist.com and click on this, the schedule your call, and then just mention the special webinar pricing, and then I'll get back to you. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, you're, you're, this is very generous, well done. Good. <laughs> we have a question from Peter. Uh -huh. uh, when I Googled for best clothing for male TED speakers, Yes. The hits said dress down in black. Lots of guys in jeans came up. What are your thoughts, Patty? For the for uh, professional speaking. Yes. Well, I always say, you know, the simplest. Okay. Do you want to know like the simplest look? Black pants, uh, a sports jacket and a shirt in salt. The shirt and the pants in solid colors and the and the sports jacket could be quite simple. You could also wear a suit. We had a couple of men when we did the TEDx talks wearing suits, but it's actually probably better to have a more of a business casual kind of a look. Okay. And now, no tie. What, what about your thoughts on jeans? Men, uh, men, uh, men in um, whole pro, high, high profile speaking situations like the TED stage wearing yes. jeans. Okay. If you wear phenomenal looking jeans, like they, they look like dress pants. Then they, they probably cost what dress pants cost too. If they're a very, very dark jean color or black, great. That can work. But I find a lot of times it's like what happened when they went to casual Fridays. They said people could wear jeans, but then they were just wearing the jeans that they'd wear, you know, working in the garage. So they have to be fabulous jeans. And I'd always suggest if you're going to go that route that you actually get help with it. Because, you know, especially when you're doing like a, a get inspired talk or a TED talk or whatever, you want to look your absolute best. I'd say always wear a dress pant. 
if I were you, unless you have phenomenal genes. And you know, the clients that I dress, they have phenomenal genes. They could wear them on any stage. Steve okay. Jobs, right? Always wore jeans too. Okay. If I had Steve Jobs' money, I would feel that I could wear anything I want whenever and I look want. at all he wore was black, a black shirt, a black sweater and black pants. <laughs> That's right. It became iconic, didn't it? Yeah. Now a question of Terry. As a sailboat coach, I have a uniform that we wear on the boat and that is working for me. Uh -huh. As a speaker, uh -huh. I could show up in Sailing Athletica. I could do the black business casual. Uh -huh. Is there a way to tie together the way I present myself at sea with the way the other speakers are dressing? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't mean, you know, there is a uniform for speaking. There's a lot of variety in it, but it's a special uniform. Is this a man or a woman? Do you know? Terry's a man. Terry's a man. Okay, great. Okay. So no matter what he has to wear a jacket, the thing is he could, he could bring out his personality and bring out his casualness. He's probably somebody who'd want to wear a dress jean and uh, maybe a shirt that's a little more, he doesn't want to look too dressed for success, too corporate. He needs to look approachable and fun and, uh, but he, but he doesn't want to change the look. He doesn't want to look too casual. He shouldn't be wearing like weekend wear because you don't have the credibility. You get credibility with the jacket, especially for men. There's so much authority with the jacket and for women too. Okay. Now follow up question for Ter from Terry. Yeah. And is that answer the one you've just given Yeah. for the difference for speaking on stage as opposed to a podcast interview? Well, let, let me, Terry, a podcast interview is not, is not uh, video, it's not visual, so it's all in your voice. And maybe, Patty, you're reading something else into Terry's question? Oh, did he say that? I, so he's not talking about, yeah, I think maybe he's talking about a webinar like what we're, what we're doing right now. Okay, all right. So let's obviously, let's he's pretend he means well. webinar as opposed to a webinar interview. Yes. Okay. So I think it depends who he's talking to, too. You know, if he, if he wants credibility with, um, if he's trying to like get people to hire him, hmm, I wonder what he'd be doing. Or if he's just trying to give out information, he could just wear a great bright colored shirt. That would look fabulous. You know, that brings lots of energy and puts him kind of into his, you know, his field. But if he wants credibility, you know, he can't, he can't look like he can't be out in the, you know, on a boat, right? He needs to look like he's, kind of, you know, matches his lifestyle. So I think it's either, it's so simple for men, right? It's either a jacket or not a jacket and having the right shirt. Okay. He's not going to wear a t-shirt. He should definitely wear a, a collared shirt. Okay. Now a question from um, Cal. Uh, do we know the background color of the stage yet? His question is referring to the stage of Vancouver Get Inspired on October the 20th. And the answer is directly behind the speaker, uh, the uh, background will be black. And uh, mm -hmm. to the left and right of the speaker, uh, the lighting will be consistent with the uh, Get Inspired branding, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, uh, pinks and purples. Mm -hmm. But the video will pick you up with a black background. And mm -hmm. I think so, give, so, Patty, question to you, given the black background, uh, what do you have any tips for what the men and women speakers uh, for the Get Inspired event should avoid or should gravitate towards? Yeah, that's very interesting. Black's probably the hardest to, to be against because black always works, right? Especially when you're building a wardrobe or you're having like, you want to be able to use the same outfit over and over because black on black, it's going to be hard to see the outline. Might have to be like a, charcoal or color or you know anything but black probably it's a very good point we'll have to you have to kind of think about that for sure that's really important okay great uh so as soon as i have more information on the color black uh -huh. or the fabric uh, i will let you know and then you can guide your clients great all right uh, uh we are uh, we have a few minutes left we have 10 minutes left uh, are there any further questions for Patty? Or Patty, do you have any other comments that uh, you mm. would like to make? Mm. 
uh, I, I have a question. And yeah. in Vancouver, when you guide people towards something that's a little more formal than the casual they are, they, they know, like, and love, uh -huh. uh, do, do, they, do they fight you? Do they push back? Or are they okay to go towards more European style of dressing? You know, the thing is, unasked for advice is often taken as cloaked criticism. So, you know, I'm very careful if I go up to people and tell them that we should change something. Most of the people that come to me, they're actually, they actually want the help. But, you know, it's, we all, everyone thinks they're totally open until you actually start working with them. And then everybody does have their considerations and their things that they like or not. So I'd say, yes, people tell me that, but when I explain to them, you know, it's, it's so, it's pretty straightforward, right? About the six different categories. So if you want credibility, you have to dress in the appropriate uniform for that particular category. You know, it's like, yes, you can wear whatever you want, but if it's, if the studies show that, that people aren't going to, you know, kind of relate to you or like you or trust you or whatever, then you have to work even harder to get for them to get past how you look. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, and another thing, Roger, a lot of times I find people don't know where to find the clothes and sometimes they're just not, they have never thought of investing in good quality, casual clothes, because if you, you know, if you're in a tech field or whatever, and you know, creative field and you need to have more casual looking clothes, you can't buy $10 t-shirts. You know, you have to spend more to get the look and the style. But if you were going to spend them in the, you know, years ago for your business wear, then you just put your same kind of business money into your casual clothes. So I think a lot of times it's just a matter of spending a little more to get the look in that category and then making sure that what you buy, if money is an issue or you just don't want to maintain a huge wardrobe, make sure that you shop with the clothes in your wardrobe and you actually make sure everything goes together. Otherwise, you know, it's even the same with footwear. You know, you can have, there's three pairs of footwear that people need and most people have a ton of shoes, but they don't have the three pairs they need to make all their outfits work. So a lot of times they're not wearing things in their closet because they're not complete. And, you know, you don't want to be rushing out to buy one shoe to go with one outfit. So that's sometimes where you need help to know what are the basic shoes I need, you know, and everyone has considerations. You know, some people have foot issues and heel, can't wear heels, and, but there's solutions to everything. You can look, everyone can look fabulous. Great. Uh, so, Patty, we have uh, seven questions in seven minutes. Okay. <laughs> so, the first one is from Candace. Uh, do you work specifically with all the speakers? When do we start doing that with you? I think Candace is uh, speaking from the perspective of a Vancouver Get Inspired speaker. Yes. He wants to know if you're going to work with all the speakers and when does that process start? Yes. I do work with all the speakers. I, I'm meeting with you many times during the, the whole process uh, so that we can go through the process and some people need more help and some people need less help, but I work with every area of your appearance so that you look fabulous when you're on the stage. Uh, and let me add, uh, so Candace, uh, you need to retain uh, Patty's services in order for her to start working with you uh, so you might want to start with this 30 minute free mm -hmm. consultation mm -hmm. see if you and Patty are a good fit. Yeah. Next question from Cal. Should one avoid shoes with a loud soul, S-O-U-L, <laughs> when you are speaking on a stage? I think, I think, I, I think that? I, I, let me answer that yes. as, as the producer. Yes. On, on the stage, you will be walking to the carpet, which is a large red triangle. Uh, you will be walking over wood. Then you'll be standing to deliver your talk on the carpet. Mm -hmm. So really, the whole question of a loud soul is really a moot uh, point. Uh, there's no creaking or squeaking that's going uh, to happen or matter on the carpet and walking to the stage, uh, if, there is, uh, if there is music going on and there's probably clapping going on, uh, nobody hears a, sh a shoe squeaking anyway. Hey, so Roger. Why don't you add to that? Roger, that's great. You know, this is like when I work with people and we're getting eyeglasses. I care how things look and they care how they fit. And, for, and you're thinking about how they sound. I thought he was meeting loud as opposed to 
making a statement kind of shoes. So if it, if that's what you meant, like shoes that are loud, they make, they look fabulous or whatever. It all depends. Everything is like, we have to kind of look at everything, but men don't have a lot of choices in shoes. So if your look is more casual, your, your shoes may be the highlight. I tell women don't probably don't make your shoes the highlight because we want people to look at your face and you know what, you can only have so many accessories. And sometimes if the shoes have too much impact, that's like two accessories. And then you don't have enough from the waist up is where you want the attention. So. Okay. Question from Candace. I'm thinking I may need to buy something new, but I'm not sure and would like your opinion, given that we now know about the stage colors. Yes. Then we need to do that, that 30 minute signature style consultation. Just go to schedule a call on my website and put your name in there and I'll, I'll get right back to you. Question from Lawrence. I have a ton of clothes in my closet for when I get skinny. Uh-huh. Should I just chuck them? Will I ever get skinny enough? Okay. There's nothing more depressing than having clothes in your closet that are somebody else's clothes, which is kind of what you have when they don't fit. I tell people that if, you, if there's certain things, if there's some things that you will just love to wear if you lose the weight or they have sentimental value, put them in a bin, but get them out of your closet, like save them. But generally, you know, there's a whole realistic thing of, will you ever wear them? Right? And it, you have to get them out of your closet so you see what you actually have to work with. Question from Mark. Hi, Patty. As an inspirational composer and speaker, preferring a casual, natural look, would a black t-shirt and indigo jacket work? Do I need a button shirt? Would you suggest a more casual look, perhaps? Uh, is he talking about if he's speaking on a stage? Yes, he's talking about speaking on stage. Okay, he could, he could maybe could wear a t-shirt with the, the right jacket as long as there's enough contrast and you can see it. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to say without seeing, but yes, there's always a place for a t-shirt. All right. And fabulous jeans. If you're going to do the jean thing, you have to make them. I can't say that enough. Okay. So, Mark, I think uh, your interests are best served by taking advantage of Patty's 30-minute signature style. Yes, yeah, please do, Mark. I'd love, to, I'd love to see what you're talking about. All right. And there are no further questions. I normally need very kind of... Okay. There's one that found its way into the chat box. <laughs> uh, I normally need very few dressy casual outfits, mm -hmm. but on trips home to Ontario, I need 14 of them. How do I manage this bracket? I like to look polished when I see my family and friends once a year. Yes, very few outfits. You know, there's a way you can have a little capsule. You have more tops that go underneath your jackets if you're gonna have dressy casual, but there's, um, yeah, you just have more more shirts, more t-shirts, that kind of thing. And then it's then because it's, it's the jackets and the pants that are the most expensive in your wardrobe. It's not the t-shirts and shirts. Great. And that wraps us up. Patty, on behalf of our attendees, mm -hmm. I uh, thank you very, very much for sharing your words of wisdom with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I've learned a lot. I've become mm -hmm. more aware. <laughs> and I'm certain the audience has too. Good. So, uh, thank you very, very much. Good. Thanks for having me.